Hello my muggle students, I am the Sorcerer Sensational Funky Monkey. Welcome to my Mystic Dojo of Love. As you've probably guessed, we're covering a film today that contains both martial arts and magic. Yes, magic. Ethereal and unknowable. A wondrous force which defies explanation. Which brings me to today's topic, Doctor Strange. Released in 2007, Doctor Strange is the fourth of the Marvel animated films, following in the wake of the Ultimate Avengers series and the Invincible Iron Man. A former surgeon finds incredible power in the mountains of Tibet and must use that power to defeat an ancient evil. But don't worry my muggle students, it's a lot more interesting than it sounds. So grab your charms and familiars and get ready to open the Eye of Agamotto as magic goes large in... Doctor Strange. Our story begins with an epic battle against a horrible monster. The battle impacts upon the life of our protagonist, Doctor Stephen Strange. Gentlemen, allow me to introduce you to our protagonist, Dr. Stephen Strange. Of course, he's actually a surgeon, so under the UK system where only physicians are called doctor, he'd be known as Mr. Strange. Not that I suppose it has that much of a bearing on things. Our first real meeting with Dr. Strange paints him as cold and aloof. Would a medical journal be interested in Miss Latanzi? No, but... Then neither am I. Descending from his office, a colleague presents Strange with an intriguing mystery. This was taken seven days ago. An embolism. And this was taken this morning. Parents, take note. This is what happens when you let your child watch too much SpongeBob SquarePants. Be aware. Get them hooked on some classic cartoon cartoons, Looney Tunes, or even some Avatar, Legend of Aang, or Korra. Do it today, before your child becomes a zombie demon from the underworld. And the patient presents him with a fiery vision. <laughs> Naturally, our good doctor beats a hasty retreat after this scare. As would anyone if they'd just seen a vision of a fiery demon. But a midnight commute home goes disastrously wrong for our good doctor. <laughs> He survives. Good news is you're going to be okay. His hands, however, are rendered useless. Desperate for options, Strange fritters away his entire fortune on even the smallest hope, but to no avail. Broken and penniless, our good doctor seeks the tranquility of death. But the fates have a different plan for Stephen Strange. For healing awaits you. And so, our good doctor reaches the Himalayan hideaway of the Ancient One. You can only heal the wounds of the flesh. This, my muggle students, is the Ancient One. Pretty much fulfills the Yoda role. Once you have healed the wounds of the soul. Okay, th this right here, this is what I wanted to talk about. The cod spirituality of this movie. I mean, we can discuss the ins and outs of perception and all that stuff in the comments below, but my own personal opinion is that reality, at least at the one-to-one -one scale, is pretty much objective. The next morning, our good doctor begins his training. <laughs> but Doctor Strange is not a patient man. My hands! are getting worse. This is not about your hands. It never has been. And there's no reason for me to be here. Well, 
well, we've avoided it long enough. The subplot, ladies and gentlemen. Essentially, what you need to know is, it's about Doctor Strange having had a sister who got terrible headaches, which may or may not have been brain cancer, which led him to take her to several specialists while he was learning medicine. So he ended up being her doctor, which is actually not allowed in real life, but still. Then she corpsed on the table, and Stephen blamed himself. But not all lives are destined to be saved. This is my problem with Eastern magic. It's all narrative causality this, and mysticism that. It's a lot more democratic in the Western idiom. And the work goes on. You perceive these stones to be heavy, therefore they are. All of which goes against all proven laws of science, but hey, magic. They don't have to explain it. Which means behind all the mysticism is actually a form of quantum engineering. It wasn't magic at all! It was super science! Limitations become irrelevant. <laughs> we then cut to an action scene in New York, where twin lizard beasts attack the Sanctum Sanctorum, which we'll get to in a minute. But it's the aftermath of this battle that we're interested in. Angry Mordo vents his rejection on our good doctor. <sighs> Have you ever held a blade in your life? To save lives. Luckily, Wong intervenes. And Doctor Strange is trained in the ancient methods of self-defense and combat. And so, a fully trained Doctor Strange learns the history of the Sanctum Sanctorum. <laughs> Finally, learn the role of the comatose children in all of this. In short, Dormammu is using the pure minds of children to pierce the veil of reality. I would make a joke about this, but Operation Utri is still ongoing. Strange heads to the hospital and begins the process of freeing the children. <laughs> it's okay. But Mordo walks a different path. The Ancient One has turned away from me. Suck it up, Mordo. Most people, when they're told they're not going to be the Sorceress Supreme, they get on with their lives. They don't side with the enemy. Across town, the defenders fall to the monstrous swarm. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a moment for the Ancient One. And so, Doctor Strange is made Sorcerer Supreme. And just in time, as the minds of the children bring forth the Dread Dormammu. And of course, the final reckoning for Baron Mordo. But that goes predictably pear-shaped for him. You have failed me. Dormammu takes the Eye of Agamotto and heads for the Sanctum. With the power of the Nexus, all seems lost. But Dormammu is a creature of magic. You wield the power of a god? Then give it to me! All of it! And so our movie ends with Doctor Strange embracing his role as Sorcerer Supreme. So that was Doctor Strange. And I've been turning it over in my mind for a while. But you know what? For all its faults, I think I'm going to put this one into the House of Love. This movie 
isn't without its flaws. The cod philosophical meanderings are extremely hokey. Perception is reality being a highly debatable concept in and of itself. Baron Mordo's third quarter villain turn comes from almost out of nowhere, and the pacing, my bait noir if you will, is all over the place. It really does feel like two movies at times. That's not to say it's a bad film though. The character arc of Stephen Strange is especially praiseworthy, as our protagonist goes from detached doctor with a tragic past, to forlorn down and out with nothing to lose, to Sorcerer Supreme with his own assistant. One can only wonder what further adventures would have lain in store if this movie had been picked up for a series, or even just a sequel. It's no Kung Fu Panda, and it's not much more than the sum of its parts, but Doctor Strange is, in my opinion, well worth 74 minutes of your time in any dimension. All of which brings us to the end of today's show. Is perception reality? Is everything relative? Leave me a comment and let me know what you think. I've been Funky Monkey, and may your god, or your iPod, go with you. Shama Jola! Chong Kim!